Welcome to Dark Horizon Creations. I'm Mike. This time we're taking a look at the G.I. Joe Retro Collection Grunt Action Figure by Hasbro. Now, if you hadn't already, please follow, like, and subscribe to my social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get a notification of when I post new content. All right, so I'm super excited about this action figure. Let me tell you why. From the moment this figure was released in the G.I. Joe Retro Collection, I passed it up. I wasn't crazy about the head sculpt. So I just didn't buy it. And I later regretted that decision. So this past week I was on Instagram and I was looking at some really cool toy photography that the Imperial Grunt had done. And he was using the Action Force Series 2 Delta Trooper, which is a six inch scale figure. And he was mentioning how it makes a great troop builder for G.I. Joe. You know, it's a generic Joe. So I thought, hmm, that's cool. It'd be great if we had that in three and three quarter inch scale. And immediately I thought about this action figure. So I went on about my business and over the weekend, I'm on the Walmart app looking for stuff to buy. And I came across this figure relisted for $12.93. And there were only five left in stock. I ordered four of them. And I have to tell you guys, it is awesome. You can see for yourself how nice this figure is. First and foremost, the retro card back. And in the artwork, front is holding an M16A1 with the triangular hand guards. I really, really like that. Nice bubble display where you can see everything. And I want you guys to take a minute, pay attention to this. You've got the action figure. He's got OD fatigues, brown combat boots, long sleeve combat shirt, brown combat harness, he includes an M16A1, an M1911A145 caliber semi-automatic handgun, a fixed blade combat knife, a rucksack, a helmet. But wait, there's more. He also includes a display stand, all for $12.93. Now this is a deal. The G.I. Joe Classified Series, not so much. My advice to Hasbro is take a lesson from this guy. This is what collectors want because 80% of their revenue is from adult collectors. We want a full loadout with each and every action figure. We want a display base. And we want a file card. Robert Gunt Graves, infantry trooper, primary specialty, infantry 11 Bravo, secondary specialty, small arms armor and artillery coordinator. Birthplace, Columbus, Ohio. Lived there for three years, didn't like it. All right, so here we have Grunt outside of the packaging, fully kitted out, ready to rock and roll. Really awesome looking action figure. See the details in the head sculpt there, details on his combat harness, his boots, his fatigues, molded details in his rucksack. Check out this holster. This is a universal holster. You can see the wraparound design where it can adjust for any type of handgun. That is a modern holster. One company that manufactures that is Condor Outdoors. So he's got one of the old pineapple frag grenades there. Really, really cool. Now there's two things I wanna immediately point out about this action figure that I dislike. The first, is the fixed blade combat knife not having a sheath. They did the same thing on the Cobra Infantry with their harness where the knife doesn't have a sheath. That's very unrealistic. The other thing I wanna talk about is the M16. Really cool weapon, but there's some problems. It's made of that soft plastic crap that warps. Yeah, I could probably superheat this, tape it down to this table, and it might hold its shape, but I doubt it. I would be willing to pay $15 each for these action figures if they would give us solid ABS weapons. I really would. It's just ridiculous to get such a nice action figure and open the packaging and get this. That doesn't look realistic, and it doesn't work for toy photography. It detracts from the picture, and I can't tell you how many times I've had to just trash a photo just because of this issue, whether it's a G.I. Joe or one of the Jazzware Halo figures. It's ridiculous. So 
So we see the fixed blade combat knife. The other accessory that he includes is the M1911A1 45 caliber handgun. Nice motor detail. Same soft rubber crap, but it's not as warped as the M16 is. Shock, shock. And let's get that back into his holster. Let's leave his helmet on. Let's talk about articulation. His head is on a ball joint. He can look down for trip wires. He can look up, see if Scarlet's anywhere nearby. Forward and lateral movement, the shoulder, bicep rotation, and looks like a double jointed elbow. My God, elbow rotation, wrist swivel, and let's see if he's got wrist pivot. Maybe, I think so. Torso's on a ball joint. He also has waist swivel. Forward and lateral movement at the thigh, thigh rotation. Double jointed knee, lower leg rotation. His foot will pivot and rotate. Can you guys believe this for 1293? This is really awesome. This action figure is light years ahead of the vintage collection from Star Wars. I like this better than a classified series. I really do. All right, so we've talked about accessories. We talked about articulation. But is this the figure for you? So to answer that, I want to do a brief comparison. I want to bring out two other figures that I have. First and foremost, this is the Chapmay Click and Play U.S. Army Special Operations Soldier. And here is the BBI Elite Force Special Operations Soldier. And this is included with their M1114 Up Armored Humvee. All three of these are really good action figures. There's pros and cons about each of them. So the first one I wanna take a look at is the BBI action figure because if you look at it compared to Grunt, it's a much shorter action figure, much smaller scale. You can see that right off the bat. And if you put them side by side with a click and play, those work out okay. But not so much with the GI Joe. Just an entirely different mold. Nice details in the head sculpt. Head will swivel left and right. Forward and lateral movement at the shoulder, bicep rotation, single jointed elbow, elbow rotation. No wrist, uh, wrist swivel there. And his torso seems to be on a ball joint. Forward and backward movement of the leg, no thigh rotation single jointed knee, no lower leg rotation, no articulation in the feet. So very limited articulation for a figure that is touted as being realistic. And in some ways it is, in other ways it isn't. So I don't really use these. I did repaint them and weather them to dirty them up. You know, if I was gonna use this action figure, I'd use it as a driver, like in the Humvees or on the Sokar or something like that. I would not use it out in my dio for actual action shots because it isn't articulated. Next, let's talk about the click and play action figure. Now, you can see that he's also out of scale with grunt. So he's really closer to uh, three and a half inches, I think. He's got a assault vest here, which is one single piece uh, molded plastic rubber, whatever you want to call it. You fold it over the figure's body and secure these little straps, which are a pain in the butt to get on. I actually used a small pair of pliers to pull them in. It does include the rucksack and it's got elastic straps. I thought this was really neat. I do like this design and feature. They all include soft rubber weapons, some form of an M4 or M16A1. And one of the things that you'll notice right off the bat is that this entire loadout, including the older sport helmet, is really from the early and mid-90s era. 
of certain units using this type of kit. As far as articulation, his head will swivel left or right, no pivot there. Forward and lateral movement at his shoulders, bicep rotation, elbow rotation, single jointed elbow, wrist swivel. Unlike the GI Joes with soft rubber hands, these are hard plastic. So you can't manipulate his hands to fit the weapon. The weapon has to be fitted to his hands. He does have waist swivel, forward and lateral movement to thigh, and rotation there just below the thigh, single jointed knee, and no lower leg swivel down there. His foot will pivot forward, and that's it. So when I'm doing shots where I want a lot of action figures or if I'm doing period shots from the early 90s, mid 90s, these are the figures that I'm gonna use. I still like these figures despite them not being in scale and not being compatible with the G.I. Joe retro collection. Overall, this is an awesome action figure. If you collect G.I. Joes, you wanna get this figure in your collection. If you're using it for toy photography, you definitely wanna buy a couple of these because Despite the head sculpt being the same, you can use these as generic troopers. And, and that's the entire reason that I ordered them. I already had four of the Cobra infantry to use with the His tank and ordering four of these was a no brainer. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have the GI Joe retro collection grunt action figure by Hasbro.